I chose this track on purpose because using the editing method in the last chapter, I spent about a day trying to align this performance to a drum machine track without creating any phase cancellation with the kicks. There's also some additional detail in these hi-hat tracks that make it a uniquely difficult beat to align. As you can hear, the track doesn't sound all that bad, but when I add a click, you can hear the fluctuation of the beat. Let's begin fixing this by putting all of our tracks into one folder. Now normally you would want to turn on the group edit function, but don't do it yet. We're going to do a quick hit point analysis on the kick track first. Double click on the track. Choose the hit points tab and click on edit hit points. Adjust the threshold until it looks like all of the kick drums have hit points. We're going to skip all of these controls and just close the window. Now do the same for the snare. It seems like there's a lot of bleed on this mic, so we should be very careful with our settings. Zoom in if you have to and audition sections while you're working. I probably should have set that threshold a bit lower, but let's move on with the lesson. I guess while I'm up here, I'm going to make sure the quantize grid will be friendly with my hi-hat part. And 16th should be fine. Now comes the weird part. A lot of people say you don't have to mess with the hi-hats when editing drums, and that you only need to align the kick and snare. This is true to a certain degree, but not in every case. This hi-hat setup is very weird. It has two hi-hats on each side of the kit. Let's see just how far we can push Cubase to fix these drums. Let's get right in there and grab every single hi-hat we can find and make sure it has a hit point. If you want to check and make sure that each slice is a hat, just click on the waveform. By the way, hit point detection has improved greatly in Cubase 6, and you barely have to check your work in the hit point editor. Let's finish off this remote hi-hat track and get down to business and activate the group editing function. Now without having any events selected, let's open up the quantize panel. Now click on any one of the tracks. And voila! Every single track is sliced up and ready for processing. Now, normally we would just set a high priority for the kick and snare, and lower for the hats. But we've made quite a few hit points in these hi-hat tracks, and I want to take advantage of them. So let's set these both to about three stars. Now you can also apply swing, decide on a capture range, and all of the other quantize functions we've discussed over the series but my favorite setting is currently the non-quantize range. Basically, I'm setting it to only fix the hits that were really out of time, not completely destroy the groove or artificially add one. I love this function. And now hit quantize and guess what? You're done. No joke, that's it. When this feature came out, I was so happy I could have cried. Less time editing and more time creating music. Again, that's what Cubase 6 is all about. If we want, we can change the settings and hit apply while the part is playing. In this case, I won't because it's sounding great. When you're happy with your settings, close the quantize panel and you're done. I still can't believe it. Now if you want, you can bounce the selection under the audio menu to create new audio files of your edited work. Only do this if you are sure of your edits. Now choose Replace. That's it. Hours of work, done in minutes. This is hands down my favorite feature of Cubase 6.